today we have a 97 P-Pump truck that uh, has some transmission issues. It's not shifting out of first gear. So hooking the scanner up to it, I see that the transmission or the truck is not seeing any output shaft speed sensor or any signal. So I first thing I did is I just went ahead and put a new output shaft speed signal sensor in it. I'm sorry. And that ended up not fixing it. So I'm going to have to dive into this a little bit deeper, see if we have a wiring issue, see if we have uh, some some issue where we're not getting power to the transmission. I will diagnose this further and we'll keep you tabs on what we find and what I see the problem is. Along with the transmission issue, we also have a power steering issue and uh, we're mounting Dorelli transmission coolers. So uh, we've got a bit of a project here and we're gonna knock this out today. All right, so we made a little headways on this truck. We figured out that, or I had figured out that hooking the scanner up to it, the uh, scanner was not seeing any RPM. It wasn't seeing any throttle percentage voltage. Um, and the transmission temperature was freaking out, going from negative 54 degrees to 384 degrees, and swapping back and forth every second or so. So I got to thinking there was some crazy stuff going on. Turns out that um, I grabbed our shop truck. Turns out we also have a 97 truck that we have uh, as a parts runner for our loaner vehicle, and I ended up pulling the PCM off of it and swapped it onto here to realize that uh, the PCM was the issue. Now we get to move on to the next project. This is Josh Fansler's 2007 and a half 6.7 G56 truck. Has 100% injectors, 12 mil CP3, and a 475. He's been here previously, uh, I think it was back in 2017, and he had a uh, slipping clutch and also had some cracked pistons. So now he's back with a fresh rebuild, still has a stock bottom end, uh, also has a clutch that can hold the power, so we will flash tune in it and see what kind of power we can make. Alright, so we started on a lower tune, tune 4 at 2400 US made 975 which is really good numbers for 100 percent injectors um, it made 1600 foot pounds of torque at 975 horsepower which is getting close to um, the max torque limit on stock rods but he wanted to try to make a thousand horsepower so i went up to 2600 us and made a thousand one point seven horsepower and 1,624 foot-pounds of torque. So he got a thousand, thousand uh, horsepower and uh, plans to go sled pulling later this week. So I'll get him off the dyno and send him on the way. All right, this week working on a few things to get the S10 ready to go to Rocky Top. Uh, we got the transmission put in last week and got a few test hits put in on Friday night. Didn't quite get as much testing done as we would have liked. Uh, Friday was really, really crazy hot, and so we didn't get out till uh, I don't think we got to the track till about nine o'clock. And we got to make three trips to the starting line, and only one of those resulted in an actual pass. Uh, we had a few things with programming, trying to do um, the new lockup, uh, first gear lockup. Some of the we had a little bit of a learning curve, I guess, getting the uh, programming done right for that. So that um, cost us a couple of hits, but we finally got that lined out. Got the truck to make a good 60 foot. Um, still ended up kicking the tire uh, down track a little bit and uh, have a few other things to work through. But we're gonna go back to the stator that we had last year uh, since we got the fluid really hot. We just, with the tighter stator, we can get it spooled, but it does create a lot more heat in the transmission and we really fought keeping uh, heat out of it just a little bit of testing that we did. Uh, hopefully maybe get a few more test hits in tomorrow night before we go to Rocky Top just so we have a little bit of better handle on this new uh, gear ratio and all that good stuff. But just doing a lot of little knick-knack stuff. Um, changed the converter out yesterday. Working on uh, putting some new bottle brackets in for the water injection. Just kind of ease of changing things. Didn't really like the brackets that we had. 
and uh, working on also putting in a new foot pedal assembly slash footrest platform. Um, just trying to make it a little bit better and nicer and uh, save a little bit of weight over the steel one that we had at first. So a lot of little knickknack stuff, uh, just trying to button up before we head out. So another thing I'm going to be working on this week is a pour-in uh, seat padding for the S10. Uh, it's a kit that we get from BSCI. It pretty much is made to make the seat support the driver a lot better. And from what I'm told, uh, if you go through an accident with a seat insert versus without one, it's a really big difference as to how long you're sore and how bad you're hurting. So we're going to give it a shot. Um, looks to be a fairly self-explanatory kit. I've never done it before, but I've watched a YouTube video once, so I'm practically a professional. But uh, no, I don't know. Pretty much there's a basic uh, foam sheet that gets fitted to the seat. And once that's fitted, there's a big plastic bag that you need to fit to the seat and pretty much tape it in place. And then once that's all done, you're ready to sit the driver in. And then there's a two-part uh, foam, uh, I don't know, resin, I guess, that you have to mix together. And then you pour it in the bag and hopefully you get it all in the bag and don't get it all over everything else. And uh, then it pretty much, you know, expands to... Uh, fit the driver in the seat. So we're going to give it a shot, see how it goes. Hopefully it turns out all right. All right, so we got the poured in seat roughed in and uh, everything went pretty well. I wasn't really sure what to expect as far as how hard it was gonna be to work with the foam and everything and how about not making a mess and stuff, but um, had everything in place the way I needed it and everything went in. We didn't get it all over the truck or Larson, so that's good. If we'd have done anything different, we'd have probably sat him back in the seat a little bit quicker. Uh, I think we're a little bit thick in the foam and the upper back area. 
Uh, just didn't know what to expect as far as how quick the foam would set up or anything. I was a little bit worried about it pushing out the top of the bag and making a mess or something. But all in all, pretty happy with it. At least for a first shot, we'll, uh, we're pretty happy. So just going to need to finish trimming things up. And once I have everything finished trimmed, I'm going to put the cloth cover on it. We should be good to go. Hey, we've got Nick Morris' truck on the dyno again for the second time today. Earlier this week, he'd actually hurt his turbo. This is a 6767 Taterbilt charger. That was the first one to hit 1,000 horsepower. made 1,008 a couple weeks ago. Uh, since then, he sprayed a whole bottle of nitrous through it. He's dirt dragged it. Uh, three different events, which is probably 30 passes or more, and he's hooked it about 10 times. So these turbos can take a good bit of beating uh, for the level that they're at. I mean, you have to remember a stock appearing turbo with modified compressor wheels and turbine wheels, ideally they're made for 750 horsepower. Um, and now we're pushing them extremely hard with big fuel and making a thousand horsepower and this makes them run allow you know they can run the street uh, classes that are stock appearing turbo rules and they can make that extra horsepower and um, hopefully win uh, so today we did a little comparison uh, we had on the dyno this morning uh, with the new turbo it did a thousand and one we had backed off the wastegate setting just a little bit because the thrust had been uh, been beat out of that original turbo. So uh, Austin Tate didn't want to drive this turbo quite as hard, so we backed the turbo off a little bit, uh, gate off a little bit. It still made 1,001. Uh, now we pulled off the dyno and we put a velocity stack and intake from the headlight all the way to the turbo. Um, so we put it back on the dyno. We're just going to see if this gains any power. We've done some preliminary testing on some twin turbo trucks that we've seen putting a velocity stack and an intake tube can pick up five to ten horsepower. So we're just going to put it on there, do a comparison, and see what it makes. Alright, we got Nick's truck dyno, did the comparison. We made 1,015 horsepower and 1,685 foot-pounds of torque, which is a whopping number for a stock appearing turbo. Uh, this is uh, the comparison this morning. We did 1,001 horsepower uh, with the new turbo with the wastegate backed off a little bit. And then we fabricated the intake pipe, put it right back on the dyno, and it did 1,015. So it is a pretty impressive uh, comparison to know that if you get the air, you know, instead of pulling the air right from the turbo right down beside the engine in the third gen location, we have a, you know, what, a three foot tube going up through the headlight, getting nice fresh air through a velocity stack. So you got a good clean intake and the headlight still works. So, uh, you know, when he drives it down to the street to get ice cream, then the cop shouldn't be too mad about it. Uh, it's just, he won't see very well after dark on the right side. So, but all together, uh, it was a fun comparison to do. Because uh, a lot of times uh, you don't take the time to go back to back on same day. So if you're looking for that extra little bit, that uh, 14 horsepower can be had by putting an intake tube and a velocity stack on a turbo if you've got nice smooth airflow going into your turbo. So look out for Nick coming to a sled pull or dirt drag near you. Uh, maybe sometime we'll convince him to put some nitrous on this thing and see if we can't make uh, 12 or 1300 horsepower on a little Taterbilt turbo like this. Uh, but he likes to have his turbo alive, so we're going to, for today, send him down the road and see how he can do tonight at a sled pool. Alright, here we have Tyler Lowler's truck that we are uh, doing a few things on. He has a 2014 that we are, he has a hard way added turbo kit to it, and he wanted us to change the VGT turbo. So we have, he brought us a fleece cheetah turbo with the VGT still so and a fleece manifold we ended up tearing the turbos off to putting a steed speed manifold fleece cheetah turbo on it change out all this uh, charger air pipes we added a fleece coolant bypass kit um, while and then we went ahead and pulled the valve cover and the injectors out when we changed the valve springs push rods we did the rail pressure relief valve. There's a long, long list of things. We changed the intake also. We had a good bit of work done to freshen up Tyler's truck and make it perform a lot better. So we are just wrapping this truck up. We're putting Easy Link tuning on it. He should be happy with uh, what he sees in performance difference in his truck. 
This is Trent Skinner's 2006 automatic truck. Has a fire pump comp one in it. Uh, 100 horsepower injectors, a 467, and he had, just last night he installed a 14 mil CP3. He started running uh, ODSS with us this year. He's semi-local to us, and he's been wanting to run 770. Hasn't quite been there, been 780s, 790s uh, with his stock CP3. Now with the 14 mil CP3 installed, he wants to get it on the dyno and get a hopefully get a 770 tune dialed in. So I will make some changes to the tune file that's in it already and see if we can't get a 770 dial, uh, tune dialed in. We have a hole in the tire. It looks like something was in there. It probably flew out while I was on the dyno. All right, so we got Trent's truck all, all finished. It really surprised us. Uh, we were expecting maybe low 800 horsepower and it ended up making 898 on a max effort tune. With 400 horsepower injectors and that 467, really, really good numbers. Um, he was happy with it. We were very surprised with it. Um, and then we got two tunes that he can use for 770. Uh, the one tune was 760 horsepower and the other tune was 772 horsepower. So hopefully those two tunes should get him right there for that 770 index. And then tune one, we made 613. We wanted a lower horsepower tune. That way, if someone else drove it, um, he can turn it on tune one and not have as much horsepower. So we'll get him off the dyno and send him on the way. I'm gonna try to show you guys a little bit what I've been working on tonight. This is the lockup solenoid out of the S10. Um, the other night when we went testing, the first time we went up to the line, we had lockup. And then when we actually made a pass, um, we didn't have lockup come on, but we only got to make one pass. So we weren't totally sure if there was an issue or if it was just, we didn't stay in it long enough or whatever, because we kicked the tires about 70, 80 feet out. We didn't know if the converter just didn't have time to charge or if it didn't actually work. So today we did a little bit more testing and we decided that um, we are commanding, we could see the solenoid being commanded come on and you could see the amperage but nothing would happen with the pressure so we decided we had an issue um, talked to Carl a little bit and he thought that maybe there could be an issue with the valve here in the solenoid so pulled it apart I put power to it and nothing moved so I thought okay I have an issue I've never had this apart before so I kind of started trying to figure things out the coil comes off very easily just with a nut on the back so this is the coil that energizes it that moves the valve and then we tried to take an Allen wrench to push on the valve here in the end and it wouldn't really want to move. So tried to figure out how this thing came apart, didn't really know how at first and was trying to figure some stuff out. And then I thought that it probably unthreads right here. Got lucky, Carl ended up calling me for another reason after hours and I was able to ask him how this comes apart and he told me how it came apart. So this just unthreads. Uh, the problem that I had was this was on there really tight and it was green Loctited and this is a really hard surface so you can't really grip it with uh, uh, pliers and you also can't mess up these lands because it's a sealing uh, surface. So this is what I came up with. I drilled a hole in my wrench and slipped the wrench over it. Then I was able to put my drill bit in there and catch a hole and then that gave me the traction that I needed to be able to turn that thing off so once I got that off spin this thing off and this part this part of the valve moves really freely so I was like well that's not really an issue because everything seemed to be fine there but then when I went to pull on this this bullet that sits down in here was super super stuck and I had to it was about everything I could do to get it out and so 
finally got it out and there must have been some junk that got down in this bore to where this thing wouldn't move back and forth freely so um, took a little bit of scotch brite down in there and cleaned out the bore of it took this thing back to the polisher and polished it up and now it's a whole lot better so um, I have it to where that thing moves in there the way it's supposed to now there it's against the spring and put this on here just do it hand tight for now put the solenoid pack back on there I'll put my temporary wire leads on here hook it up to my lovely battery pack and cycle it there you go you can see the valve move freely so I think we're back in business Put some, uh, we'll put some Loctite back on that thing and tighten it back up and we should be ready to put it back in the truck.